this is Lanuary. And this is Proud Heaven. Last night, they were caught trying to fit in with the popular kids. By lying about liking a band neither of them even heard of. When asked to name three songs, they cried under pressure. Nobody likes you guys. Now if you excuse me, oh, I have a book to read. Like a poser, it was black and white. There's a bit of truth to every joke, and there's a bit of heart in every letter. One bit of heart I feel for is feeling the need to impose or shadow parts of yourself to feel a different way. Posers, posing, lying, the art of fitting in. To us, there's a lot of layers when it comes to personality and feeling the need to fake who you are. But honestly, you don't have to. Um, is this you? Yeah. Have you gone through this before? Are you assuming I'm unhappy in life? <sighs> Oh. I've been running a case file on you, and I just want to know if you could relate to the topic at hand. I don't need therapy. Problems are for losers. Every person is encouraged to socialize and get yourself into some type of group standard. There are social groups in every building, and an audience to cater to in most places we have to go. If you're like most of the population, your journey starts in school when you're a kid. You're squeezed into a social space where making friends and relationships are important, but for some, it isn't so easy. Some people don't fit into social groups normally. It could be a lack of interests, differing personalities, mental instabilities, and hell, sometimes you just aren't an asshole, and that means you're a black sheep in a group of assholes. Fitting in isn't easy, so this introduces the art of posing, or like, guilty pleasures, and all of that stuff. Right? Right. Everyone experiences passion for something, yet for us neurodivergent people, a harmless hyperfixation can feel like life or death in a social scenario if we let it slip out. Sorry that I want to talk about my D&D character for an hour straight, I promise I'll cry about it later. And that too. There's a lot of ways somebody can feel pressured to fit in. So, as I was saying, when I say posing, I mean feeling the need to lie about who or what you are and what do or like to get others approval. It's an unhealthy habit, and one I was guilty of for so many years up until the end of my senior days. The art of posing can go far, but so does the feeling to fit in. So, posers, don't fake your personality. Rule! Rule! Ugh, I don't like that guy. Oh, uh, we, we don't have to fake it anymore, right? Shit, <laughs> no. Hey, thank God. Oh my God. I'm taking way too fucking much energy. Oh my God. Like, yeah, we thought we liked you. No, we don't like you guys, bro. You should not mold yourself to fit in with others. That's your precious time and energy being spent that could go towards treating yourself. You will not be compatible with everyone. No, you won't. Which is why the art of posing, faking to fit in, and feeling the need to do so is silly. Uh... I don't mean doing it is silly. I mean feeling the need to is silly. In modern day, once you grow older, there's no need to be a poser. There's no need to have to lie about yourself in social situations once you're out of that bubble because it's okay to just be you. Now, when I say poser, I don't mean wearing a band shirt that you don't actually listen to. Well, that is one of the things, but I mean as a whole. Feeling the need to not be yourself or like what you actually like. Hiding things you like around your friends because you feel like you'll be judged. Unless it's problematic, then you should hide it. Lying about what you like to fit someone else's quota and fucking googling facts about their favorite show because you said you liked it too but never actually watched it. You don't really owe anyone anything unless they've got your back too, no matter what. And they've proven it to you time and time again. And like, that's not your fault, really. Sometimes we're taught from a young age that we're not worth being around unless we're 100% agreeable. And I feel that. And the people who I called friends who made fun of me, well, I eventually got the balls to tell them to fuck off. It's just too much energy being spent on other people when you could be kicking back and indulging yourself in your lovely little interests as you deserve. There's the hitch of friend circles and cliques where they gatekeep interests, loves, and general media. Like a, you can't like this because, uh, we do, or a, you have to like this to fit in with us. Right. High school kind of sucks like that where nobody really knows who they are, but they are so intent on crucifying everyone who's different. So cool. Well, when I was in high school, I was part of this friend group that I truthfully didn't have much in common with. I was different, and that should work, but it didn't. It was a group of people that shamed me for liking different things. So gradually, over time, came in the band tees I didn't listen to, and the games I'd forced myself to play to fit into said group. I was a poser! 
But guess what? It worked. And then I considered my own interests my guilty pleasures. So guilty pleasures, special interests, and hidden interests. These are also aspects of personal interests that I think should probably be noted. Well, my guilty pleasure is enjoying a Sprout Haven. Could you imagine telling someone that in public? Oh yes, guilty pleasures. But honestly, looking back on it, I don't even know why they were guilty. I mean, just kids being kids and cringe culture beating that up into a pulp. I hid so many interests as a kid because it was seen as cringe. I love those little head-bobbing animation memes, the type that big YouTubers with no artistic talent like to clown on. I love the LEGO movie so much that I got put in Time Out in Dungeons & Dragons, the nerd game that's mainstream now. But a few years ago, I would have probably gotten shoved in a locker by the popular kids for liking it so much. Can you try me shoving, uh, you in a locker? Or... Are you hitting on me? No, I just think it'd be funny if you, if you, if you, if you drew me, you know, like, b b bullying you. <laughs> Blushes. I'll consider if you watch the Lego movie with me, honey bun. Guilty pleasures and special interests are the same principle to me. I don't feel like there's a need to put a title on something you love to justify how you feel about it. You should be able to feel the way you feel about something no matter how a group would react. Never feel guilty for your pleasure. But guilty pleasures, special interests, band t-shirts, and personality quirks all tie down to the same kind of feeling. They're all parts of somebody and what make you you. It may not seem like it initially, but it is. For yourself, or whatever. After primarily focusing on adolescence in school, it is worthy to note, like, well, anybody can feel like this at any point of their life. But in the right community and environment, you really don't have to. What we're trying to say is, it's okay to not be liked by everyone. It's like that saying, you can be the sweetest peach in the tree, but some people just don't like peaches. It's not your job to change anything about yourself, but maybe one day, you'll find the biggest peach enjoyer out there who will appreciate you as you deserve. And do this story they learned. That today we're thanking our patrons. So Musa Movies, Marissa is cool, and Mimi Dix. Thank you so much for being a uh, patron and subscribe to my Patreon. Link in description. Yep. They don't have to lie to fit in, and they will always be losers, like little lad Lanuary from January. Good night. I've just had printouts of your YouTube channel staring me in the face every day. I hope that makes you happy. It brings me so much joy. It's like you're always with me. Bet you love that. I, I don't write.